Okay, so this is the Friday Fix and I'm Kiri Phoenix and I have an amazing guest in the studio with me today. I'm joined by Rainy Milo. Hello, Hello. Rainy. How's <laughs> Thanks it doing? Thanks for having me. I'm good. I'm excited to have you actually because obviously it's really good to get artists at this point in their career yeah. um, and really get to know your story and stuff because um, for people that haven't heard your stuff or don't know about you just yet, mm-hmm. I'm sure they will very soon, but can you sort of give us a little bit about your background initially? Southeast Londoner, um, singer-songwriter, 17, and just basically started writing for myself and have now put it out for other people to hear and share it with. And it's it's happened like quite quickly, but then like you kind of slowed it down. You're kind of building on it right now, aren't you? Yeah, because it happened really fast after I dropped the track about you and then there were so many labels and people emailing me and stuff and I didn't understand what was really going on. So I was just like, whoa, leave me be and let me just kind of do this on my yeah. own. And if you want to be a part of what I am after you hear what I get up to, then that's great. If you don't, then there you go. You kind of learnt through hearing what I was doing first yeah, rather than jumping in without really knowing what I was about. And obviously because being such a young age, do you think, because obviously when I when I heard the music myself, I'm not going to lie, I actually did think that you had quite a mature sound mm-hmm. and I definitely, I would have put you about like my age, guys, so, <laughs> yeah. not to offend you or anything. No, but, not at all. But obviously the, the music itself is actually quite mature and yes. obviously um, you said that your background um, is poetry, which I, is close to my heart because I oh, write poetry as well. Yes. Um, and so how did the transition from poetry to music sort of come about? I think it's really quite, um, well, obviously poets, it's more, you can be a silent person. You don't have to perform your poem. You mm. can just have it published in a book, you know. So whereas with um a song you get to really perform it how you want it to be heard there's no other interpretations by someone else you know so I feel like my songs are definitely all me and the way I perform it that's how the story wanted to be told how I wanted it to be told. so with your music then obviously I know that you write all of your own stuff as well so are you quite sort of controlling in the sense of like you know exactly what you want and that kind of thing I am very protective of my music and what I get up to you know because it's at the end of the day it's just me and I have only me and it's me that kind of got me here you know Definitely. and then with a great team around me who I really trust and get on with so I'd like to remain in control like I am yeah. always always so with with obviously signings to the to the label and stuff mm-hmm. um what was the decision behind that because obviously you said obviously a lot of people were contacting you yes so yeah. how did you go about making that decision and choosing like the right sort of path for you well with that label too I got the chance to have my own imprint and my own thing going on the limey label inside it so I still got to have something that was even me inside of that too yeah. which was a great option for me and it was just after I put out the EP then people got to hear what I was about and I wanted to go with someone who I knew truly understood and would let me do my thing. And obviously I'm young, so it's very easy to be like, for people to be like oh she doesn't know what she wants to do but I do you know what I want to do sh- so just let me do it yeah <laughs> definitely so obviously the um the going over to America and coming back to the UK and all mm-hmm. that kind of thing do you think that's affecting your music because obviously w- the the kind of vibe that I get from your music is yes. quite sort of American influenced in in terms of um sort of the Erica Badu and all that kind mm-hmm. of background but then at the same time you've got such a British stamp on it with yes. the way that you yes. um that you sing and like mm-hmm. your vocals and stuff so the combination of of the US and the UK do you think it's had like a big influence sort of going over there recording over there that kind um of thing? I think that um writing the songs over here obviously so it's always just going to be so London because mm. I wrote them when I was freezing on the back of a bus and stuff <laughs> you know but then recording in America because I was in a vintage studio in the Bay Area oh, wow. in San Francisco so that really had an effect on the sound mm. because working with the vintage gear it really brought that extra magic that you just kind of lose when yeah, you're working definitely. with digital so because it does sound kind of like raw and completely yeah, definitely like a little bit of edge to it so. and that's what the analog does and it lets you keep that and I'm so grateful that I got to got a chance to work with the things that I was working with in the studio yeah. tape running my, my tracks through tape it's just great no, really that's, good that's chance. really good the EP as well like tell us like sort of the vibe and like what inspired the EP the EP is almost the diary of a 17-year-old in London. It's my diary, but with songs. And so everything was inspired by real life and everything on it I meant. And uh, and obviously, you've got the... I know that the album's... You're sort of working towards that for maybe next year. Yes. So um, what sort of things, like, what path are you heading? What direction? In between that. Um, 
I'd say, well, tomorrow night I have a show at Electro Works East London, nine o'clock, and I did one definitely last night. Try and come please, yeah, please definitely. come. <laughs> and um, so it's just doing shows because then I can really have a movement with my fans and they can definitely. really understand because my songs are stories and I'm going to be there to tell the stories on stage. So I think that's so important between then and now yeah just to build up that sort of core fan base yeah i know as well that like, you're quite active with like you've got the twitter the instagram the yes Tumblr and all everything that kind of thing. <laughs> so you're quite active online and uh-huh. do you do you like sort of interact with your fans quite a lot as well or? i think it's so important i answer questions on um tumblr even things like people asking me like what shade of lip gloss do i wear yeah. you know because it's just i want to be i'm a real person yeah, i don't want to be something that's like very untouchable because my music's so real and so normal really it's just normal life people so I don't want to be someone like oh I want to talk to her but she's just you know I've got no idea how to get a hold of her so yeah that's definitely really good so obviously um are you what who are you working with production wise and all that kind of thing for the album coming up Mm. um Darje some new guys have produced some tracks for me Chet Faker who's a really cool down under guy (laughs) really sensual stuff and some guys called caswell two really sweet guys who've just brought a lot to the table for me and you were saying it's quite organic like with what you're yeah the the people that i met and found it was just all so natural and a lot of chance meetings especially with the caswell guys you know i just met them one day when i was recording with someone so nothing felt forced to me at all yeah oh it fits so well yeah that's brilliant okay well i'm gonna play your um first ever song yes which is about you and obviously you recorded that um well was it 15 you recorded that i think i was oh my i might i was 15 because then (laughs) i had a 16th birthday after it i'm sure yeah so the song that sort of got you out there and really drew people to your name was actually one that you actually wrote when you were 15 and recorded that's serious yeah so you've got a long great path ahead of you i can definitely tell thank you for coming down today i really appreciate it and good luck with everything thank you See what am I supposed to say To hope that one day Maybe you'll stay Cause when my heart beats double time And I'm left hoping one day you'll be mine Or maybe today You'll see I'm crap with conversating And if you get to I can miss the lost train But I promise there's so much more to gain My heart's cold, it'll warm to you My mind's on overtime, but it'll stop for you My eyes were wondering, but they got stuck on you There's something special about you Yeah, there's something special about you You've heard it all before But it's all you and nothing more You're so much more than just a new face I'm kiddie How about a game of kiss chase Now listen, there's just two options But I don't mind either It's yes or yes, yes or yes Yes or yes, yes or yes Cause when my heart beats double time And I'm left hoping one day you'll be mine Or maybe two Special about you Cause when my heart beats double time When I left hoping